In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to solve the problem of the lead coming off the cable of the heat vision camera. Now, this is not a very common problem, but it happened in my installation, and this is an old camera. This is from 2015. So this camera has been outside, and I think somebody has, uh, ham while they were installing a gutter, hammered the cable and actually uh, broke these wires. So I cut the remaining wires off, and now I'm sitting with this problem. Now let me describe why this is a problem. The first reason is these colors that Hit Vision have used on the camera are not the standard uh, TIA uh, 568 and um, 568P colors. You can see a normal Ethernet cable conforms to a normal Cat 5E or Cat 6 cable conforms to a standard, and the colors that of the wires also. Are important now if you look at these two uh, leads here the cat 5 and the air uh, the heat vision do not correlate that you can't say yellow to yellow because there's no yellow on this side you can't go green to green because they, the heat vision man, the manufacturer has actually changed the designation of these wires now I'm not going to uh, show you the different wire layouts right here are the pinouts for the Hikvision cameras. Now I got this from Hikvision's website and this is the uh, technical bulletin for these cameras DS2CD and DS2CD7 and a Pro Series camera. So what you need to see is there are different pinouts for the different range of cameras. It's very important to see that. So I was using the value camera, the value series. So where you read this DS2CD is on the barcode which is probably stuck on your camera or just compare the camera to the uh, ones on offer on Hikvision's website and you'll see which are the value series and then the, my camera happened to fall into this category so I will use this pinout which is white to brown brown to brown white so this is the Hikvision colors the colors that are from the Hikvision camera <coughs> and this depends on the standard you're using the T568B standard is for Cat5 E cable, and this is the one that most people are now using. If you have the other camera, Pro Series and so forth, then you will use this color coordination. All right, so now I'm going to demonstrate how I actually do the repair. Right, now that we know the correct pinout for the cable, we're going to carry on with why this is a problem. You see, these are stranded, and, the, and this cable is solid. Now, if you try and insert a stranded cable uh, into an RJ45 and crimp it, it will crimp, but then if you pull it out, it pulls out, for the reason that the crimp does not bed into the solid cable. You see, the solid wire of the Cat5 the uh, allows the pins when you crimp it or from the RJ45 to actually embed into it so it cannot move. So this is what happens. The lead goes in here and then when you crimp it, the, there's a little copper uh, plate here that actually pins the Ethernet lead in a wire, all eight of them, in two places so that it cannot move and also so it makes good connection. Now when the cable is stranded and then you have this pin coming here, it kind of gets between the cables, the, wired, um, uh, the wires, and then the wires actually can pull out. And that's what happens here. That's why I'm not going to connect this straight and then um, crimp it because it might work well today, but after the wind blows and vibration, it, it, it won't. The co corrosion will get in there and it doesn't make a good connection. So you have an option. You have many options. You can do this option and insert it into a box so that the other side of the uh, lead can be plugged in. So you just need to uh, get your punch and then uh, connect this. But in my, in my solution, I'm not doing it that way. I want to now use this as a spare camera. So I'm going to connect it to a Ethernet uh, RJ45 and if I do want to connect it uh, with an extension lead I'm going to use this back-to-back -back connector so that's what this back-to-back -back connector does it allows you to connect 
back to back. Now, this is not uh, necessarily the best way to run a cable, but as you can see, the Hikvision people have just put the cable almost straight in here. And the reason is that the bandwidth is not that high. So if you were going to use this, cable, this Ethernet cable at uh, 500 megabits, because uh, this thing can do a gig, then the order that these uh, twisted pairs tr are, are wound in is important. But because the bandwidth of this camera is so little, I'm not worried about using a back-to-back -back because when you use, do things like this, it does slow down the speed, the bandwidth of the, the cable, the capacity because of the um, electromagnetic interference that can occur and the noise um, that can occur when the wires are left um, not twisted, they're no longer twisted. So now getting right in, this is how I'm going to solve this problem. The first thing is I'm going to strip the cable a little bit by taking the jacket off a little bit more, there we go. Now I'm going to strip each wire and get it ready to be soldered. Okay, so I'm just using my wire strippers and I can see that the Hikvision people are not serious about the bandwidth because this is actually aluminium wire which is also not the best as compared to copper. Now I'm going to take my Cat5 Cat cable, I'm going to untie the twisted pairs. One of the reasons why they are twisted is because of the skin effect. Um, it reduces the skin effect when they are twisted in a certain manner. Now be very careful when you strip solid wire because if you are too aggressive with the wire stripper you actually make a um, dent or a cut into the wire and because it's solid a few bend, a few twists and the wire actually breaks off. So I made sure that I have not um, actually embedded the wire stripper mouth into the actual wire. Now all I have to do is join this to this according to the color code. So I'm going to start with the Hikvision Orange. Now the Hikvision Orange is this one. And according to the diagram which I showed you goes to Orange White. So Hikvision Orange goes to Ethernet Orange White. And then I'm going to join them like that. Now just so that they don't come out, I'm going to start the soldering right now. I've got my soldering iron here. I've set it to 360 degrees and just a quick solder there. There we go. Now orange white. I've just got my cheat sheet here for the colors. Now it's yellow goes to orange. There we go. And quickly solder that. Cool. Now it's green goes to green white. There we go. Now it is purple goes to blue. Hick Vision purple goes to Cat5 E blue. Now it's grey goes to blue white. Blue goes to green.
brown goes to blue uh, brown white and white goes to brown so I'll do these two together and I'll solder them both at the same time right so brown to brown white and white goes to brown cool now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shorten these because they are soldered so they don't need to be long as long as they're making connection there we go so now I've effectively gone hit vision to cat 5e and uh, stranded to solids now I'm just going to tape this up now it's a good idea to use heat shrink This is heat shrink. When you heat it up, it gets uh, watertight and it um, shrinks. So first I'm going to tape it up with insulation tape. Now keep in mind, there are eight leads here. So I don't want to let any of these leads touch each other. So I'm going to bend them. Now this is where I said the, the problem is, is when you, when you actually let the wires sit like this, this is when you destroy the bandwidth that the cable can operate at but because it's a camera and it's only going to use maybe this is what a two mega this is a three megapixel camera so it's, a, it's only three megabits so it's not a lot of data so i'm just going to flatten this and start putting the insulation tape around just making sure that these colors do not not touch each other right that's four now I'm going to do four on the other side And the last one. Right. So I have now separated these wires from each other. And I'm going to now put the heat shrink on the around it so that it gives it a real airtight what I should do just to help it along and just put some insulation tape just to make it nice and tight before we put the there we go just to really tighten it in there okay now I'm going to just put the heat shrink like so and now I'm going to get a lighter and light the heat shrink Okay, so here's my how my matches. I'm just gonna get the heat shrink going. You can see as you 
Bring the heat near the heat shrink, how it shrivels up. Right, now I'm just going to close this end here with my insulation tape. What you could do is you use a smaller heat shrink to go over there, um, but I don't want to make it too rigid, the cable. I don't want the cable to be too rigid. And I'm just going to close this side, but this power cord is actually not necessary because I'm using PoE power over Ethernet. Right. So now I have joined this. It's made a good connection here. The heat shrink is giving it uh, some support for it. It's some bending there. And now all I'm going to do is quickly put an RJ45 onto the other side, which will allow me to connect it in any which way I would like. So I just put the jacket, then I'm going to use the B standard, 568B, so it's orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown, there we go. Pull them all straight, check them, orange, white, orange. Green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. Right. Insert the RJ45. Clamp this with your fingernail. And then really dance it in. Make sure all of the wires are at the end, which they are. Crimp twice. There we go. Now I can choose how I want to uh, use this camera. I want to actually use this as a backup camera, so now I can always just plug it straight into uh, my unit without having to have a fly lead. And that is how I have solved the problem of the broken, torn wire. Anyway, thanks for watching.